President William Ruto has reassured the nation that he will keep each and every of the promises domiciled in the bottom-up economic transformation plan, and that is the main goal of his administration. Now, in the fullness of time, how is this likely to pan out, or is it just hot air, as has been occasioned many times before with previous administrations? That is our conversation today on yet another informative edition of Business Glide. Your go-to point on matters public policy analysis, business and economics at large. I'm your truly Richard Mwenja. And with me on this conversation is none other than East Africa's renowned public scholar, Aman Bon Manyora. <laughs> oh, Ye yeah. Yet again, your Bermuda blue shirt. Yeah, yeah, Get yes. another pair, though. People yeah. are asking. I have so many shirts. My problem is what even to put on. Really? Yeah, my wardrobe looks like a laundry. Can you please continue? Come on. No, no, no. You need to improve. I mean, yes, come yeah. on. <laughs> Can you afford a suit like this? You will take another 10 years to afford. Can you say that? Yes, let's go. <laughs> let's go. Very well, but I'll get there. Yeah, you'll get yeah. there. You're with my blessings. Uh -huh. With my blessings. Uh -huh. Yeah. And you're going to bequeath me some of these suits? Of course. So. All right, very well. Straight into today's conversation, signed, we're talking matters. Uh, the president's renewed commitment in fulfill fulfilling all his uh, campaign promises. Let's start from the most recent development. The development that was where during the signing of performance contracts for the different ministries. And they are in... Uh, he's he's going to crack the whip on all those who, who are not going to uh, deliver on their mandate in respective uh, dockets. So let me ask you, him going uh, bare knuckle on the CSS and the PS, does it somewhat point to someone who, has, who is trying to reinvent the wheel when it comes to efficiency of public servants and more particularly uh, political appointees? No, it's normal. It's normal mm -hmm. for a CEO mm -hmm. to, to rein in her and uh, employees and managers. Mm -hmm. And uh, sometimes to motivate them, sometimes to even be harsh. Uh -huh. Those are normal things in management. Normal things in management? Yeah. Normal, very normal. But, you see, mm -hmm. but, you see this, there's a collegial aspect to this. Uh, like a CS is not your boy. A CS is not a worker. A CS is more of a colleague. Mm -hmm. So that the president is first among equals, like especially where there are prime ministers. These are supposed to be your colleagues helping you to deliver on your... They cannot be people you can say you are not entering because you are late. If you did that to me, I, I, I tender my resignation the same day. President shouldn't be doing that? No, no, that is... That is, that is that, do you treat that people who are your juniors? Cabinet is not the president's junior. No. Cabinet, these are your colleagues. They are your equals. You're just fast among equals. Mm -hmm. Yeah. How you approach them, then it's it. You cannot say it. close the gate so that Kindikia and Moses Kudia don't enter. That is, mm -hmm. she should not repeat that. That's that's wrong. Nothing to do with him. Do uh, but you see, people in this country uh -huh. can do anything to remain in those positions, because they get so used to them and the money and the other. Not me. Not you. And not me. You do that to me, and I tend to my resignation on the spot. The next day. The next day. What? There's the next hour. When I drive back to my office, I, I do the letter. It will be getting to you and I'll pack everything and left the office. I cannot come back even if you played with me. Heading home now to deal with yes, depression. Yes, do with my own things, yeah. You Especially a professor like Indik, he's young, he has achieved so much. Uh -huh. And he, the future is bright for him. Mm -hmm. Why would I? I can, you cannot subject me to that. Ah, very well. No, no. Then again, still talking matters, uh, trying to improve public service delivery. Therein, we've seen him uh, even pinpoint some of the civil servants who are really uh, not fully aware of what entails their respective dockets. And he says he has more intelligent information about their dockets than, than the ministers who should be in charge. Does that point at someone who is very much detail-oriented and perhaps inspires confidence before the taxpayers that this is indeed... But that's what I said when he formed his cabinet. I said <laughs> it repeatedly. I said we have a situation where the CEO is going to be the only person who knows what's going on and the only one working. And I said, the president has put up a cabinet. They cannot work for him. Because he's a hard-working man, he's mm -hmm. smart, he's intelligent, he'll be doing the job himself. But I also told him, and I warned him, and I advised him, that is only possible if the only thing you'll have is to run government, which you can do with all these useless ministers. But you see, I gave an example of the road when I was training how to drive. Oh. My instructor told me there will be no day the road will be cleared for you to drive alone. So you must learn to drive with these other vehicles. So I was telling the president, it is not always the case that as a president, you, the, everything will be so peaceful for you that you can only concentrate on. Politics will come. Raila will come with politics. And before, before three months, it was happening exactly what I said. 
you strike an equilibrium. So he must now concentrate more on the politics than running government. And yet he constituted a cabinet where he was going to be the only guy around. That's the tragedy. And sometimes I keep telling people, <laughs> keep it simple. In many respects, just keep it simple. If something doesn't work, it doesn't work. Accept and do something about it. This cabinet can't work. You they just cannot move work. it. They cannot, they cannot deliver on anything. Just buy the bullet. Reshuffles? Buy the bullet. No, just dismiss them and hire another, bring other, other Kenyans to work for you. Of course, retaining one. If there's a Kikuyu, you want a Kikuyu, you'll get a Kikuyu. If there's a Kalenjin, you'll get a Kalenjin. If there's a Luo, you'll get a Luo. They are there. If it's a certain circle of people who helped you and they gave you somebody who in your city to Meleta come Mount Kenya Foundation or whatever, I'm a Kama Zisin Watuflan who support. Go back to them. Tell them now who you are, Pana. Recommend another one. Bring another one. Bring <laughs> 10, I pick one. Or bring 5, I pick one. This can't work. It cannot work. So why is he surprised? He must have known all of these people. But the president has been in government for 10 years. He knows. He knows these people he was putting in place can't work, they can't deliver. Most of them don't even dist can't distinguish their left hand from their right hand. You saw during the vetting. <laughs> they can't distinguish which is your right hand. Another <laughs> Just I, I, read I read something on Twitter and I was sharing <laughs> with another friend of mine. Mm. She told me, even me, I can't think. That my sister, when I was two, my sister, my sister's age was twice my age. I'm now 40. <laughs> what is her age? <laughs> <laughs> this great friend of mine was scratching her head. <laughs> this morning, actually. Ah, she was scratching her head. It was on Twitter. You know, how many people will say 40? This minister will say 40. She will say 8. I'm telling you. If, you, if you... A similar question. Bring, bring this 22 years. More than 10 will say it. We have highly educated ones <laughs> there in. Oh, education and on you papers. I'm the one who works in a university. <laughs> You're questioning the intelligence? Those papers are just papers. People just, these days, Kenyans are very good at papers. And a tupa hii, and a tupa hii, and a tupa hii, and a tupa hii, stop. I've had enough. Get the job. Give him the job. Zero. And we must get away from that. We must get away from that. Yeah, yeah. Today, many, if not yesterday. Many places in the world, people are turning away <coughs> from papers uh -huh. and are concentrating on abilities, on skills, uh -huh. on aptitude, on attitude, uh -huh. on adaptability. Not just papers. One, two, three, four, five, ten, or many, but they are not. University. So this year, even if there are papers, they are just. Very well, anyway, let's advance that. I'm happy the president at least has seen it. Uh -huh. Early enough. Yeah. Within the first year. You see, a PS. Is a person you appoint to a ministry, if they have not risen through the rank, it is better if they have risen through the rank. Eh? Over time. Assistant secretary or what, under secretary, mm -hmm. director, then, uh, you know, then peers. That's the best way, the British model. Mm -hmm. But even if we do our model, which is a bit of American model, you bring in strangers, it must be somebody you put him in a ministry and within maximum 30 days, maximum. That's for the average one. But a smart guy, two weeks, one week, they understand the ministry. They Full can even surprise the line managers in that ministry. They can even shock the directors without with the understanding of the ministry. Without benchmarking? That is a piece. What do you benchmark? You need capacity. Mm -hmm. What people don't know is that you need capacity to do. The brain must have the capacity. And... And you must have some dream in your mind. So you get, I've repeated this, you get a guy who never dreamt in their life they could be a headmaster of a primary school. Then you make them a vice chancellor of a university. That's why you see this place in these universities. A lot of these vice chancellors, you put them in a room, you'll think you are talking to primary school teachers. You can do better than them? This are, most of them can't do it. They, don't, they can't distinguish their right from left. These are members of so you get, a person, you get a person who could never have been uh -huh. uh, what we used to call, I don't know what, an average junior civil servant, mm -hmm. head of a small section. You make him a PS. They can't deliver. It requires imagination. To be a PS is a person capable of imagination. Are you questioning the integrity of the vetting process? It's before not, this we, there was no vetting. What vetting? We have never had any vetting. Even when they themselves have said 
that this one cannot do it. The, the parliament says no. There was one somebody they said no. This one she lacks passion. So somebody asked, "Where is passionometer <laughs> to measure <laughs> how passionate she is uh, in this country?" Yes. Let's advance the conversation, Sam. And um, part of those things that uh, the president literally uh, broke down and, and and trying to inspire confidence with was. The three main areas he has already achieved under his first year in office, that is uh, reduced prices of fertilizers, hiring of over 55,000 teachers, and also the, 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 the launch of the Hustler Fund. And this is just somewhat to, to, to push away the naysayers and skeptics that he's going to uh, deliver on his full mandate as the president and uh, bring to light the entire plan for Kenya Kwanza government. Do you find that these, two, these three major things that he's already delivered just sort of said the president that even those we think are too huge for him are just going to be a, st a stepping stone. Let me tell you something. Mm -hmm. You know me, I'm a simple man. I'm Mr. Simple. <laughs> One way of moving forward mm -hmm. is to appreciate the floor if it is slippery. Mm -hmm. Because you need some friction to be able to move forward. <clears throat> One way of moving forward is to be able to identify what is serious from what's not serious. The idea of what is called scaling of things. Mm -hmm. You must have the capacity to put things to scale. Put things at the level of priority. N uh, separate the serious from the non-serious. Mm -hmm. you, you, you know, if you give the hustler fund, you must know it's a political game. Don't count it among the things you have done. You will pollute your mind. The human mind works in a very special way. Mm -hmm. If you make small things appear big, the human mind will adapt it that way. So for you, small things will always be big. And in real life, there are people like those. People who make small things look like very big. So if you, you must know the Hustler Fund was a game, a political game. It's not an economic exercise. Political decoy. It's just, it's just mm -hmm. a game you need to, mm -hmm. to please the hustlers because... It's not, it's, it's not, it's not, it's, it doesn't have an economic viability. viability. Mm -hmm. Because nobody get, ever gets a loan just before, you, you must assess what I want to do with the loan. Not just my capacity to, to repay, what I want to do. Is it a viable project? So when you give money without assessing, that is an overdraft. It's a fuliza. So you say, I've helped Kenyans with a fuliza. So it remains a small thing. You don't count it among your things. And in any case, what business can you do with 500 shillings? I don't want Kenya ni wajinga sana so that you give me a thousand shillings and then you say I'm, I'm promoting Kenyans through, through what do you call it? This Fuliza government, Fuliza. Fuliza, Fuliza uh, what is it called? Haslaf. Haslaf. That is, you remain, you, you don't, don't, don't mention it. What, what's a guy? Then you go to the fertilizer. I said on this program, I think with you or somebody, at 3,500 fertilizer landed being given by the government duty free it was already a con game did i say that you did you remember now it's 2500 it is what has changed what i said 3500 is what the government <clears throat> even this 2500 is almost commercial let them call me the minister of agriculture and finance we scout, scout for fertilizer in the world we buy it no subsidy just buy it Land it in Mombasa. It will be like 2,800. Cheaper landing cost? And of all course. Things. The fertilizer on the world market is not expensive. Landed in Kenya, it can go beyond 3,500 without any subsidy. So that was a game people were using it to eat. Mm -hmm. The fact that it was drastically moved from 35 to 25 shows you Manyora was right. What is this th great thing that has happened? For the government to sell us, to give us fertilizer 2,500, and they were giving her 3,500 just a, a few months ago. A few months ago. And you call her tum tupu, so don't even count that. Mm -hmm. That's also not a good idea. In any case, how many bags of fertilizer do you have? Vis-a-vis, -vis, what is the national demand for fertilizers? How much have you given? I was calculating, we went to came in my county, we didn't get vega. Not even one. Now, they brought last week. I was counting the, 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 the fertilizers. The, the bugs. We are not farmers because we don't have land. But even where they are brought, is a drop in the ocean. So don't count such a small things as success. As success. Get people to sit on a table. Genuinely ready to serve this country. 
and to create for you a legacy and tell them, I want you to think until your head can burst. But I want you to solve the crack in the fertilizer problem. Is it viable for us to do a plant of fertilizer? What is the cost? <laughs> but if we must continue buying from outside, what is the most effective, cost-effective way? And which country can offer? Is it Morocco? Is it Ukraine? Where? You know? Is it, is it uh, is there one in Europe? Is it one of these Scandinavian countries that produce fertilizer? <laughs> which country can give us fertilizer? So that when it comes in this country, we buy and pay and only wave duty. We distribute to farmers at a cost of 2000 Get out of my office. Go and come back after 30 days. That is how I want this government to be run. Mm -hmm. And one day it? this government, country will get somebody who can do that way. So, hustler fund is missed. Fertilizer is a business for people. The next 55, one was 55,000 teachers have been hired in under one year. 55,000 teachers. Under one year. Under one year. That was all. And you, you, you should know how some of them, what kind of teachers they are hiring. Against what demand? <laughs> Not just hiring. What is the demand? The demand has always been there of 120, 130. Is, is a good attempt. But the question is, <laughs> is that the way to go? Who tells you we need teachers? What else? What alternatives who do we have? You, who tells you we need teachers? This is the 21st century. Maybe we need less teachers than we have, but we pay them well. Maybe. Who knows? The, there are questions about teachers, not just I've given you 5,000 teachers. Do we need them? Are they capable of teaching in the 21st century? Going the digital way. You could embrace technology mm -hmm. and find you need half the teachers you have now. And pay them well. And render the rest jobless? Anytime you have a new thing coming up like AI or a machine like in Kericho to do tea, people think it's going for a job. It should create more jobs. I don't know if you get what I'm saying. Improvements should create more jobs. So you are asking such a question, uh, question sir. We began recruiting teachers during colonial time. We have even what we call the monitor system. Mm -hmm. Because there were not enough teachers. The monitor system was where the bright children in class would teach their, their fellow students. Fellow students. Mm -hmm. You get it? Monitor system. Then, when we started, when we got independence, we were in a hurry to get teachers because expansion of education. True. We recruited teachers who are almost barely qualified to go to training. It's only recently we have reviewed the P1 course and removed it. The Bachelor of Education was a collapsed thing because there was no time. It's the UNESCO who came up with this idea to help us, Bachelor of Education teachers. So you are doing your history and geography at the same time you are doing education. Collapsed. It's no longer viable. <laughs> so this country must think beyond mere publicity, beyond mere populism. We have gotten to a point where in this country, mm -hmm. nobody should enter a classroom to teach, even if it's a kindergarten classroom, ECD, without a university education. That's where we are. And we are more than enough graduates. So this is the thinking. It's not that I've given you 60,000 teachers, then clap for me. No, it's the question of thinking. Mm -hmm. Should we hire more teachers? Or should we retain a few and pay them well and embrace technology? technology. Are we having the right people to go to teacher training colleges? Do we need those teacher training colleges? How are we going to do the in-servicing? So I look at this report that has come out. I just laugh. We just laugh. Ah, we'll yeah. talk about it on Friday. Yes, Education yes, reforms yes, therein. But yes. at this point, allow us to wrap this conversation. Talking matters, uh, renewed commitment from none other than the President William Ruto. That his government is committed towards fulfilling each and every of the promises they made on the campaign trails that are domiciled in the bottom-up economic transformation plan. That is their manifesto. Now, time for our fan of the week. It is none other than this amazing gentleman from Oloi Toki Tok, Peter Oloi Mwamba. Tok. Peter Mwamba from mm -hmm. Oloi Tok Tok, a very wonderful place. Uh -huh. You've been there? Yeah, of course. I went there to give a talk to teachers mm -hmm. yeah, sometimes back, and I got an opportunity to, to sell off some of my books when I was still enthusiastic about uh -huh. making money about through writing. writing. <laughs> uh -huh. Yeah. Where Thank did, you very much, Peter. Peter Mwamba. Mwamba. Where did your writing spark go, though? People asking. I want now to resume when I when I retire. When you retire. Mm.
in just about how many years to come? Ten? Maybe, five? Maybe five months. Maybe five months to come. <laughs> <laughs> Very well. We'll ask NSF to start processing your retirement package. Until next time on Business Glide, I'm Richard Moenjo. Always a pleasure to have you on board.